Hey everybody, it's me, Laura, and today we're going to go ahead and create my play on words pots, my houseplant. Yes! Woohoo! <laughs> so anyways, as you can tell here, I have started out with a piece of just scrap clay, and I've kind of used my acrylic roller to just go ahead and roll it into about, a, oh, I want to say about a quarter of an inch to a an half an inch thick. And then I'm just cutting away the edges. I'm just trying to get a nice, flush, almost square-like looking piece. And notice there I went at an angle and then matched it up on the other side. And this gives me my little clay house. And again, I'm using scrap clay here. So from here, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to start using my needle tool. And I'm just creating an indent going vertically down on this house. And the reason why I'm doing this is because we're going to go ahead and have some fun with our paint this time, and it's going to be a blast. <laughs> anyway, so I'm just making my little indents, and then we're going to go ahead, and once I make all my indents all the way around in this little vertical pattern, I'll go ahead and take some more polymer clay. I'm going to say I rolled it out on a number four setting on my Atlas Poster Machine, and then once I did that, I'm just going to go ahead and cut a small little sheet of it, and once I do that, I'm just going to place that right on the top of that little tiny house that I've made. And it's just going to be enough to go right over the top. It'll look like a nice little roof. And if you're cutting this and you're thinking, okay, well, it doesn't look quite, it looks kind of big for this house. Just go back in and just, you know, take off a little bit more here and there, or even cut it in half. Um, you could do that too, like I did right here. You just cut it in half place one part of your roof on there and then take the other piece and place that on there too. Okay, so right here, like I said, that roof isn't quite right. So I took even my little scissors here and I'm just trimming off the side here on my roof so it's not quite so big. <laughs> and once I have that, then I have a nice little roof on my little house. Okay, so from here, I'm going to go ahead and I rolled out another piece of this scrap clay. And I want to say it was like on a number, no, oh, two or three setting. And so it's a little bit thicker, but that's okay. And then I just kind of squared it up a little bit and I'm going to place my house right down on that piece of clay. I want to go ahead and make a nice little base for my house. So it's not terribly large. I just, you know, I want to say it was like, oh, maybe an eighth of an inch to a quarter, maybe, you know, all the way around that little house when I was cutting it. But you know, you size it with your blade. You're like, okay, how big or how small do I want it? Well, you know, just go by your own judgment. Okay, so right here I'm bringing in another little piece of clay and I'm going to make my door. And I want to say this was rolled out on number four setting on my Atlas Pasta Machine. And I'm just, really, I'm just cutting a little rectangle. And I'm going to place that right in the middle of my little house here. And then I'll go ahead and roll up a little tiny ball. I'll use my knitting needle to make a little indent on that little knob. And that way then I'll have my door. Okay, so right here, I'm just going to go ahead and put a piece of wire in. That was 22 gauge wire. And then I'm going to make another little ball with some green clay. I'm going to go ahead and roll it. I'm going to go ahead and press it down, make a pinch on one side, drag my needle up, and that will give me my little leaf. And I'll make a couple of these little leaves for my little house. Okay, so right here I've baked my little house um, and I'm just going to go ahead and make sure it's all glued in with that wire and then from there we'll move on. Okay, so I wanted to go ahead and do this little house where I painted it up. So I'm using um, I want to say it's red. Actually, it's berry metallic paint. Um, I found the paint, you know, at my local Walmart. 
So if you wanted to go ahead and look for some of those metallic paints, they're really neat because they give a nice sheen. So try that out. And you know, it, it's kind of a nice, you know, it's a different look. Anytime you paint polymer clay, it just looks so much different than if you're using colored clays. And so I wanted to give you guys here an example of what it might look like using acrylic paint versus just using regular polymer clay. With this said, I wanted to go ahead and let you guys know this is, I wanna say, I used Berry Metallic, and you could find these paints at your local Walmart or even a craft store. I'm just using, you know, metallic acrylic paints. So I, used, I picked out a red, I picked out a blue, I picked out a, a purple, some silver, and I just decided just to go ahead and have some fun. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys watch my hands talk as I paint in the rest of this little house and I add in some painted details as well. Okay, right here I'm prepping my little terracotta pot for this little house. And I need to let you guys know, if you're wanting to know how I did the little terracotta pot, I have a video on that, go check it out. Um, you might also wanna refer back to a few other, there's like the berry bush and the sunflower. You might wanna go and check those out because I might go into a little bit of detail there on those as well. <laughs> so. Anyways, I'm prepping my little um, pot here and I'm just going to glue him in and I'm going to add in my little sign that he is a little house plant. <laughs> and right here you could tell that it was a little flat piece. This originally was that liquid polymer clay and then I put down some fresh polymer clay and made a flat little sign. Again, I glued this on to my little pot and then I'm curling up my wires and then finishing up my cute little house plant here that I have painted. Okay, so here we're going to go ahead and create our little um, house plant, but this time we're going to go ahead and use just clay. So really no painting going on in this version. So again, I'm making my little house. I'm starting out again with that scrap clay. I'm going to cut it to size, and this house will be a little bit different from the last one. I decided eh, I want it to be a little bit, you know, a little bit wider maybe, or even a little bit deeper. This is where I say, you know, Cut it, as long as you cut it in that square and then make your little peak, you have your house. So you can make them all sorts of different sizes and this thing can give you some variations. Now right here you're noticing I'm, I'm rocking a little horizontal line with my blade on the clay here. I'm doing that to give myself a little bit of a guideline. Um, this way then I could say, okay, at this point, I'll go ahead and make my peak. And it really does kind of help me a little bit because sometimes I'd be like, okay, I'm off by quite a bit. I went way towards one side 
and it really does make a difference. Just tiny, you know, giving yourself a little bit of a guideline. Okay, so I had some kaleidoscope cane left and I wanted to go ahead and use that on this particular little house. I'm running through that slice on like a number um, four, three or four. I'm trying to get it kind of thin and then I'm gonna place it right over that house and it's, it's kind of nice because it's instant pattern. I don't have to then paint anything or do anything special or extra. And I will have to say, painting little house takes time. <laughs> really takes a lot of time. <laughs> and so really using one of my canes, it just, oh, cuts down the time entirely. And not only that, but then I've got the pattern. I don't have to go looking or, you know, making, I have some cane work, I can use that. And so I'm, and then I'm just filling in here. So I've got like, I like using the square kaleidoscope because just, you know, this little house has got, it's all line. It's all squarish type lines. So I just go in and then I take off a little bit here and there where it might be coming away from the house and you'll have a nice little consistent pattern throughout. Now this cane was pretty big. <laughs> I didn't really reduce it down. You know, you can make your cane smaller or larger, however you want when you're gonna go and place these pieces on your little house. But from here, I'm just gonna go ahead and take more and more of this kaleidoscope and I'm gonna wrap this pattern all the way around. Okay, now that I got that pattern all the way around my little house, I'm taking some more of that scrap clay and I'm gonna go ahead and make my roof. Now, I really liked the color of this mud clay. It was a little bit more on the gray side than it was like brown. And I just thought, yeah, let's use that for the roof. If you want to use a colored clay, use something else. You don't have to be stuck with your mud. <laughs> I just thought, well, it's convenient. It's here, I'll use it. <laughs> so go ahead and make your little roof and you know, flip up the little end or you know, trim it to how this little house would look best. Okay, now I'm gonna take my 22 gauge wire and I'm gonna go ahead and make a little indent into the bottom of that little house. And then I still need to make my little platform or my little, you know, little area that the house will sit on. And again, you're just going to go ahead and cut that into a square piece that will fit for that house. And, you know, use your judgment if you wanted a little bit, you know, wider or thinner, to, you know, going around that little tiny house. Here I'm reinserting my green wire, my 22 gauge wire. And then once I have that there, I'll go ahead and we'll make up the little door and I'll put in a couple of leaves. Here I made a little dark brown door with my dark brown clay and I want to say I rolled that out on the number four setting on my pasta machine and then I'm scoring some little lines on my door to give it a nice little texture to it. Once I have that done I'm going ahead here and I'm just like I said I'm trimming up that base just a little bit more and then I'll add in a little tiny doorknob on my door. Once I have that done we'll go ahead and we'll do the leaves and insert the wire on this particular house plant.
Here I have already baked my house and now that it's baked I'm taking my wire, I took it out, I'm inserting a little bit of super glue right there and then I'm gluing in my leaves at the very base of my little house. Now I have my terracotta pot and I've gone ahead and I have placed in a couple extra, well, I should say a leaf here and then another leaf. And we're gonna add in the sign as well, along with these wires in which I'll curl them up, giving you another little house plant option when you go to create these. All right, this next little house plant is the use of using polymer clay along with your acrylic paints. Just a little bit of everything. So we're taking, I took a stack here of purple and white and we're gonna use this, you know, I took a, a slice of it, ran it through my pasta machine on like a number three setting or number four. And then I'm just gonna have that pattern go all the way around the house. And then I'll also bring in some acrylic paint but for the most part, I want you guys just to enjoy this one and let you watch my hands talk. Thank you. 
Okay, so here are the results of creating my little house plants in polymer clay. You might notice here I added in a little bit more paint here and there and all that sort of thing. But please use this for study and reference. And if you like this video, please like, subscribe, and leave me a comment. I'm always wondering what you're thinking. Otherwise, I am sending out my biggest hugs to each of you, and I hope you have a fantastic day.